Hello, Keith Rucker, benchmachinery.org. So back over on the surface grinder, we left off, uh, we've built our fence back here in the back in the last video that we did on this series. And uh, we had to quit before we could actually grind that in parallel because I didn't have my, uh, my, my, my grinder or my wheel dresser here properly set up with everything I needed. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing finished, set up, get our wheel dressed properly, and then get in here and get this ground out. And hopefully we'll be ready to start really using the surface grinder to its uh, maximum ability. So let's zoom you in here and we'll show you what we got to do and get it done. So here's my uh, wheel dresser that I have uh, for doing all kinds of custom uh, angles and also you can do custom radiuses and do coves and what have you with this. It's a very versatile tool for grinding or, or dressing your wheel. And, but when I bought it, I bought this used and it was missing a, a little important part. So this little piece here is where your, your actual diamond goes into. And if you notice, it slides in this dovetail and but it, there was nothing in there to hold it in place. I wasn't exactly sure what it needed to go on, but as it turned out, there's a um, little rod that drops down through a hole here that literally goes down through here. And there's two little buttons here. One of them is pretty much set. The other one has got a cam in it. And you roll this around and you lock this in place. Well, this little rod was MIA, it was missing in action, did, did not come with one. So uh, I measured it, it was, uh, I think it was 13 millimeters is what size this was. I ordered a piece of drill rod, I cut that off and uh, voila, I've got my missing part. So what I need to do is get in here and we need to can this thing around where it's holding that in place like such and tighten that up and it will still move around a little bit that's fine and the other thing is there's a little uh, set screw right here and this actually tightens up uh, a little ball a little, little spacer in here on the gib that will uh, also keep that from moving around so now this is very stable it's not going anywhere so the next thing we need to do here is um, put our diamond in and uh, the diamond actually goes up here in the front. And this little piece here is just a gauge that came on here. And in theory, that should be exactly uh, in the center of this. So when you're doing a radius, uh, it is actually exactly uh, on the center line. So you can uh, go around something or, or go above and, and uh, make a concave or convex uh, circle and it'll be on the center of the, the tool here. Now I haven't verified that that's actually on the center, but for what I'm gonna do today, it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna be doing a straight line. So uh, it does not matter for now. Now at some point in time, I need to get this thing and dial it all in, check my angles, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll probably do that in a video down the road uh, when I have a need to do it. But right now, all I'm gonna do is go ahead and put a diamond in. Uh, there was no diamond when I got this. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead. I, I purchased one. Uh, we'll go ahead and put it in right there. Uh, there's a little set screw down here on the end that holds that in place. All right, we got that tightened up. And now I need to pull the, uh, the little custom guard here off. So we'll just unscrew that. There we go. And I will put that up for future use. So in addition to being able to do radiuses on this, you can lock this thing down and using this little back wheel, you can make a straight line on here and you can do that at whatever angle you want to. There's a scale on here on degrees and um, what I wanna do is on this wheel, we want to dress the back side of it. We don't want it to be perfectly straight up and down. I want the back side of that wheel to actually be angled in just ever so slightly. Uh, one degree is all I really want to do. And what that will do is, is it will basically make sure we're only cutting on the very outside edge of this wheel. I don't want to be cutting on it all the way up and down. I just want to be cutting on that outside edge. 
that'll assure me that I'm getting a nice uh, straight angle as I go across this thing. So um, I'm, this, this angle, while it needs to be at one degree, it, it's not super critical. Uh, I have not verified my scale on here. I'm assuming that it is correct. So I can actually look on the top and go to 90 degrees and we're gonna go over and put it on 91. And again, if it's not exact, it's not super critical in this particular case. So I've got that set at just one degree past 90. And now uh, when I go up and down, it should do what I want it to do, which is uh, give me that, that angle on there. So we're gonna get this set up on the uh, chuck now, get this back here behind it, and we're gonna go ahead and dress that wheel so that we have the back side of that with that little angle on it. I had to kind of cock the guard out of the way here a little bit because this thing was coming up and actually hitting it on the back side here. Uh, but I think we're about ready to go. I've got this in here. It's not quite touching the wheel on the back right now. So I had to cock this uh, guard up out of the way because it was actually hitting right here in the front. But uh, I think that's fine. So I think we're ready to go ahead and fire this thing up and we'll get this back angle uh, dressed in there. Uh, it won't take much. So let me fire up and let's do it. So I got the uh, camera set up behind this, so hopefully you can kind of see what's going on. And uh, we're just gonna kind of be going up and down on this thing. So let me uh, bring my table out just a little bit. All right, so we're starting to get a little contact there. A bit more. I think we good enough right there. So as you can see, that should be only cutting on that very outside edge now. We'll probably have to dress this. Uh, I'm gonna rough it and just try to get everything all the way down where it's cutting. We'll probably come back in here, redress the wheel and do a finished pass on it. All right, so we're ready to start. Um, easing in on this. I'm real close to the fence on this side and I don't know how straight it is to start with. So uh, I'm not touching down here yet, but I want to go ahead and just come all the way down and make sure I'm not going to crash this wheel in anywhere. I imagine it's going to start cutting on one side before it does the other, like right there. It scared me. So uh, we'll come out. I'm going to go ahead and We'll feed in a few thousandths and I'm roughing this in. Yeah, I, I felt like when I milled this that um, because of the vibration, these outside edges are probably out farther than the other, but we're touching off. So that gives me something to work on. Uh, we'll just pull in, that's about probably 10,000. And we're just gonna keep going back and forth until we get this cleaned up. getting a little bit of contact all the way across there. I'm just going to take a light pass here. All right. So what I'm seeing is, is that we're, we're cleaned up all the way down. So now what I think I'm going to do is um, you know, I was taking some pretty heavy cuts there. I'm sure that my um, grind that I put in the back of that has been eroded away. So we're gonna go ahead and redress the back of that wheel. And now we can come in with some really light passes and uh, make sure we're getting a nice square 
um, backstop back in there. All right, I can see where that fence has been rubbing on there, so we're gonna go ahead and redress this. Pull that out so it's just touching. All right, right there. That's real close. All right, I think that's good. So we'll go ahead and put a finished grind on there now. All right, we're gonna very carefully now bring this back till it's just touching that fence. All right, right there. I don't have a fine adjust on this, that feed direction like I do up and down. We're gonna take some real light passes this time. And um, sneak up on it. So I'm gonna just go in about a thousand. cut all the way down that time. So we're gonna go back. I'm not moving anything. We're just gonna go back and forth and let this thing spark out. feel any heat in the part so I don't think we've got anything too hot that's going to mess anything up. I don't feel any heat in it whatsoever so that's good. There is a little bit of a burr across that top so I'll probably take a file and just knock that off. But uh, I think we got a good back rail grind on this thing now and we're ready to start using this surface grinder. feels much better. I won't cut myself on that now. Well guys, I think that's going to be a wrap for this video. We've got uh, our back fences ground in. Uh, everything's made. We can use this machine now. Um, I do want to just give a shout out, a thank you to Stan Zinkowski, uh, who kind of coached me a little bit on doing this. Uh, he knows a lot more about surface grinders and so forth than I do. And I was uh, emailing him back and forth and he was providing some advice on how to get this set up properly. And uh, if you're interested in surface grinding videos as well as lots of other stuff, I'd encourage you to go take a look at uh, Stan Zinkowski's uh, YouTube site. And uh, it's under Shaden HKW is the name of his uh, YouTube channel. And uh, he has a lot of sur good surface grinding material on there uh, as well as other things. And Stan, of course, will be hosting the, the upcoming Barzy Summer Bash here in a couple of weeks that I'm be making my way out to California for, and I'm looking forward to that. So if you're uh, interested in going to that, uh, check out Stan's channel as well. I'm not sure if there's still room for registration for that or not, uh, but you can sure check out his channel and uh, find out details. But with that, uh, we're, we're good. I, I will just make one comment. I'm probably gonna get up with the uh, Walker, the company that made this chuck, and, and just order the proper fence for this. I don't think there's anything really wrong with this fence per se, uh, but one, one little design feature that I don't have in here is, is, and Stan pointed this out to me, is that I really need to have some little bosses behind this to make this stand out so that coolant and trash and stuff can escape out from the under, underneath it. I could put some washers behind it and do that. Uh, but yeah, I think for 75 bucks, I'm just gonna order the right fence for this thing and uh, not have to worry about it. And I, th I think it'll probably be a little bit more substantial and better than this. But for right now, this is gonna be more than sufficient. 
uh, for what I'm about to be doing, and uh, this is something that I need to get this thing going. And I don't have that four weeks lead time like I mentioned in the last video to get that order. They, they needed four weeks to get one to me. I needed one right away, so this one will get me going until we can get the new fence in. Uh, so with that, uh, that'll be a wrap on this video, guys. And uh, I'm about to get ready to start doing some grinding and starting another video on that, uh, on doing a cutting it, uh, grinding some custom tool cutters for the lathe. So uh, watch out for that video down the road. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.